Risk analysis is tied with vulnerability assessment. Thus, each identified threat should be analyzed and security measures should be taken to manage the risk posed. Risk analysis is based on qualitative and quantitative analysis. In some cases, we see semi-quantitative analysis too. Now, qualitative analysis uses words or ranks to measure the impact of identified risk rather than do it with numbers. Low, medium, and high are usually used to rank the risks. That's right. And quantitative analysis is purely numeric numbers and values and is usually based on statistics, historical records, best practices, testing, and experiments. Now, this method could identify which risk has higher loss impact and which risk requires higher budget to mitigate. Mm -hmm. After identifying the risks and ranking them, the response planning phase starts. In an ideal scenario, the response policy is tested and risk assessment is performed again to make sure the response plan fully covered the risk. This operation is more like a cycle. Every day new threats appear and security controls might not be capable of preventing the new threats. Mm -hmm. In other words, risk assessment should be performed again whenever a new threat arises. Correct. And strength, weakness, opportunity, and threats. This is what we call SWOT analysis. Those four points are the main studies in order to manage a given risk. Review documentation and research online for potential threats. Risk domains can be DMZ, private network, guest network, cloud network, mobile users, etc. Risk exposure is the impact caused by the risk on the enterprise. Consider also attack skill, the probable occurrence of an attack, the damage from this attack, and the value or controls that could be exploited. Right, and then, Laura, what we need to do is rank the risk from high to low or high numbers to low numbers mm -hmm. and use qualitative and or quantitative methods to further rank the risk, right? Keeping in mind the likelihood of a risk occurrence. Identify countermeasures, which could be security controls that are already in place or new measures that should be taken. And then finally, really document everything. Likelihood is the possibility that a threat or vulnerability can turn to a real risk and can be exploited. The impact of the risk is measured by quantity of damage caused by the exploit. Likelihood and impact are measured with numbers from 0 to 9 where 0 to 3 is low and 3 to 6 is medium and 6 to 9 is high. Now to find out the likelihood of a risk ask these questions, right? What are the skills required for an attacker to exploit the vulnerability? What are the benefits and or motivation for the attacker? What are the requirements to access given resources? Is the vulnerability easy to discover? Is it known by all security professionals and hackers? Is there an exploit already for this vulnerability? Hmm. Can you detect the attack if it took place? Yeah, those are really good. Now, to determine the impact of a given risk, now ask, how sensitive is the data that may be disclosed? Is there loss of data integrity or availability? Can you trace the attack source? Will the attack cause financial or reputation loss? Mm -hmm. Who is the loss visible to? Is there sensitive data at risk or being exposed? Now, after determining these risks and then ranking them, a response plan for each risk should be applied. Response strategies vary from one risk to another, depending on how severe the risks are. Mm -hmm. There are four strategies known in the industry. Avoidance means that the risk is reduced to zero or eliminated completely. It's, it's almost impossible to achieve this level by taking security measures. Mm -hmm. The only way to do this is to remove the cause of the risk, i.e. allowing access to social media is a threat. The only way to avoid it is by blocking access to social media for all the organization. Right? Transference is when you transfer the risk to another entity, such as insurance or service provider, where they are accountable 100% for the impact in case 
an attack occurs. Yeah. And mitigation is using security controls to protect against a risk until the risk impact is reduced to a level that is tolerated by the organization. Usually there is a numeric value for tolerance specified by each organization. Mm -hmm. Risk mitigation aims to reduce the impact to meet this level or even lower. Acceptance is the level of tolerance specified by an organization. When all security measures are taken to mitigate a risk, the remainder of impact will be accepted and tolerated as there's no way to remove it 100%. Nope.